Welcome back to Tuesday Tips. This is The Coaching Educator with Rebecca M. Carroll. Are you feeling like you have test anxiety? Or are you feeling like your child suffers from it? Let's talk about that. In this video, we're going to be talking about conquering test anxiety. Now let's face it, we all feel uncomfortable and have a certain level of anxiety before we take a test. Standardized testing is no different. And now there is so much out there because of social media. In particular, everybody gets their scores and they're usually right at school on their phone. So I'm gonna talk about that, stay tuned, and I will give you some really good advice that will help with all of that. So let's find some strategies that might work for you. Test anxiety, what is it? Well, basically it's a type of performance anxiety related to the test taking process. And that is according to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America. You need to be aware that there are physical, emotional, and cognitive signs of test anxiety that we can help you work through. Firstly, there are warning signs. So the physical warning signs of test anxiety is just dull and severe headache, excessive sweating, racing heartbeat, sudden stomach ache, lightheadedness, and kind of a feeling of hot, your face is feeling hot and turning red. And these are pretty extreme feelings, not just the normal before you take a test. There's also emotional signs where you're irritable, you're angry, you have fear, or you're disappointed, especially in the results of your test. So everyone experiences anxiety differently and be aware that these are, they kind of feel like unexplained emotions, but I can assure you that we have some solutions, so stay tuned. If you have any comments, if you've experienced any of these and you can give any helpful tips, please put your comment in the comment section. The cognitive warning signs of test anxiety could be negative thoughts, difficulty concentrating, mind going blank, and racing thoughts. Those are kind of within your brain, you're just feeling these things that you can't, you can't stop swirling in your brain. So you want to be able to identify and really attack some strategies that will help, especially with the cognitive test anxieties. The first thing that you can do is definitely prepare for your tests. It's important to know if you need to plan longer or plan shorter, but to take the time to plan for preparing and build it into your schedule. Some things, anything to do with statistics or math, I had to, to take the time months ahead and build it into my schedule versus if I read a theory, I could retain that much better. And I found that if I just copied my notes, I could generally do really well on the test. So it's important for you to know thyself and to also prepare yourself depending upon what section you're struggling with. So you wanna prepare in advance. You wanna really take a good look at yourself, do a practice assessment and see which section you need to really focus on and what length of time that you might need in order to prepare for that exam. Some students do well one month ahead, some students need a full six months. So that's how you kind of set your goals. You want to set your goal and you want to set a study schedule. I always say treat it like a job. You want to find that sweet spot. Generally, when you start studying, the summer you become a sophomore and you know you're going to have that opportunity to take your first PSAT, that's where you want to see what you can be doing as far as how long does it take to prepare for a test. So if if you find that you're sitting there and you're trying to study for three hours and it's just not working after an hour, 
then it's important for you to pause. The most I like students to do is an hour and a half. I really encourage them to do about 45 minutes, take a break, do another 45 minutes, and that way it helps them to refresh your brain, it, it keeps you going, but it's important for you to figure out, am I better at doing an hour a day for five days, an hour a day for three days a week, an hour and a half every day, you know, those are the things that you can explore knowing your learning style and things like that. We oftentimes incorporate that within our program because it's so important to understand, number one, how your particular brain works and how you do studying and sitting still. So you have to kind of find that balance and build that in because our brains do need rest. Preparation the night before, it, it's important to exercise. I really encourage kids to exercise before they do any test prep and or before you do the test. You wanna have a healthy dinner. You don't wanna be up all night. You wanna prepare what you need to take. I have had students forget calculators. If you go to a testing site, they are not allowed to give you a calculator. So it's important for you to understand that and be prepared prepare the night before and get a good night's sleep. And that way you're going to prepare yourself for success. And that's the most important thing. What should I do after the test? Just leave. <laughs> go. Some kids go to work, some kids go to practice, go have fun with your friends, don't talk about it, don't think about it, just move forward and wait until your test results come in. You don't want to dwell on specific questions that you may have thought you missed or you may have missed and you don't hang out and talk about it with your classmates. It's important for you to just leave and put it behind you. It's important. It's just a really good strategy because there's many projects or things that you'll have to do that there'll be a really hard deadline and it's important to be able to do that. So different strategies work for different people try some of these suggestions. One of the biggest things that I'll tell you, I have looked, I have been a test proctor. I actually make everybody stand up. It's really important for you to do that. When they say you have a break, get out of your chair. Even if you're standing up right next to your seat, it's so important to do that. Take a drink of water. If on that longer break, you can get up and walk around a bit and within the confines of what they allow, it's important for you to do that. So let's, let's go over some test strategies that work for different various people. So you can do breathing exercises and these have been very, very effective for many people. So square breathing is that exhaling everything out of you, slowly inhaling for a count of four. That's, and you can do that anywhere and you can do that without disrupting people. The count at breathing is breathing in holding it for a count, and then exhaling it for a certain amount of time as well. So it kind of helps you with that stress, It especially if you're thinking of something and it's going round and round and round, that's a very helpful one for that. And deep breathing is just that breathing in and breathing out, just breathing in and breathing out until it calms you down. These are really good strategies and it's helpful in any situation. The next thing we're gonna be going over is just kind of developing your mantra. So I, you know, I can do this test, I can rock this test, I'm prepared for this test. Have that going through your brain. It's oftentimes good to write it down on your practice sheet. I have studied for this test, I know what I'm doing. Whatever will work so that you're looking at that and focusing on that is helpful. It's important to create it, to repeat it in your head, to write it down, and to look at it. Brainstorm a personal mantra that will work for you. We'll be adding below a brainstorm personal mantra worksheet for you to work on that because that is so key to success. That is just very, very important for you to be able to do it. So you want to also allow yourself positive talk. 
Something that sounds negative in your head is not good for you to be thinking of in the test. So you don't want to ever say, I'm going to fail this test. We don't want that in your head. What we want is, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best on this test. I'm not smart enough. That's another negative sounding self-talk, which, which is important for you to not do. You're going to remind yourself that you're prepared for the test and I know the material. I'm prepared for the test and I know the material. Another one is just giving up that completely, why am I bothering? It just embarrasses me. My scores are never gonna be high. Those are all negative self-talk. What we want to do is I can do this. I'm gonna try, I can do this. I'm here, I'm ready. All those things are more positive. So you really want to try to replace anything negative that comes in your head with the positives. The next is visualization exercises. It's kind of thinking about a, a place or a, a moment that you remember that's positive to you, that helps you to calm down. It's, you can close your eyes for a brief second. You can imagine the place and help you to feel calm. It's important for you to learn how to do this. It will help you throughout your life. So you want to focus on how you feel in that place and carry it over to how you're going to be feeling now during the test. And that will help you. So if for me in particular, I don't live near an ocean anymore. So a lot of times I visualize that ocean and that feeling, especially early in the morning when the waves are coming in. That's a really good place for me. I always loved as a kid growing up near the ocean. So that would be an example of, I might be stuck in traffic or tensions are high and I just close my eyes for a little bit and I think about that place and I bring that feeling into the moment. Not all strategies are going to work. Find the one that works best for you. I can't stress enough exercising. If you're not a natural exerciser, at least walk. At least walk. If you walk for half an hour, that will help you. It kind of resets your brain, clears your head, and it's really, really important for you to do. Progressive muscle relaxation. So this is actually really helpful, it, especially if you're starting to tense up. And so, you know, just lifting your shoulders up and holding it for 10 seconds and then dropping them. It will help release your, your muscles. It will relax you and repeat. And oftentimes that's really helpful for people, especially if they're feeling the neck getting really, really tight in here so it's important for you to think of anything that works for you and especially athletes you know they're used to this progressive muscle relaxation they're used to you'll see someone who's going up to bat and they'll do a few muscle things you know moving their arms and everything like that that's what you're you're trying to achieve here so in summary the best thing you can do is to prepare 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 Set that goal, find who you are within the testing world, create a good plan that's, that is doable. Don't create one that's so, so over the top that you're not gonna be able to complete it. Refer to your completed worksheet that we're, you're gonna be able to download that in the notes. Practice the strategies until you find your favorite because we all have things that stress us. So just apply whatever is working and apply it to that moment where you know you have to take that ACT or SAT. So I want you to relax, try to find the strategy, and try, eat, try them each week and see which one works best. And we'll see you next week. 